Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. It is nice to be doing worship in here with people looking at me. Um, so God bless you all for being here. Thank you all for um, remembering to come. Welcome to everybody watching at home on our live stream. We're going to continue doing that even as we are back together in person. A couple announcements as we get started here this morning. Um, normally, I would be telling you that next Sunday is a congregational meeting. But that meeting is being postponed um, until March 27th. So our February meeting will be in March. But it's all good. So just don't worry about that. But following this service, um, you'll notice that our greeters today are from the Boy Scouts. Um, they will be doing a talk in the Augsburg Room as an adult forum on scouting. So if you'd like to learn about scouting, talk about scouting, ask them what they think the Flyers are going to do the rest of the season, anything you'd like. Um, they're there to talk with you, and we'll be glad to have them, and thank you for being here. Um, Ash Wednesday is March 3rd, and there will be services at 12 noon and 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Um, there will be ashes at both services. There will be Holy Communion at both services. If neither of those work for you, we will be doing um, simply an imposition of ashes from 10.30 to 11 a.m. and from 5.30 to 6 p.m. Um, at this point, I'm thinking I'll just be standing outside um, by the traffic circle over by the office. So you'll just pull in, and I will be out there, and I can put ashes on you, and you can be on your way. Um, there will be midweek Lenten services, and I'm using that term loosely at this point. It will be midweek Lenten something that will have prayer in it and scripture and I don't know what else. Um, and they will start on March 10th at 6.30. Um, so watch for more about that as to where we'll be and how that will be structured. Um, what else do I need to tell you? I think that's about it for now. Um, so if you are ready, we are ready to begin our worship service. If you are able, please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children, we have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome, accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Our opening hymn is Lord of Glory, You Have Bought Us.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness. We are children of the light. Let our light shine before others. Come and see. i 
Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to live in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson comes from the 45th chapter of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they that at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of the famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. as clear as the light and the justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers and the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because in you they seek refuge. The second lesson comes from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? 
with what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as far as what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God, but God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as, he, just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I have to tell you, um, I had trouble this week getting past the first verse in the gospel. I kept getting stuck at Jesus saying, love your enemies. It was just this huge roadblock for me. It was this, it was this huge stumbling block for me. Love my enemies? Love my enemies made me think, first of all, well, who are my enemies? Do I have enemies? And if so, why? Is it something I've done? Something I've not done that has made someone my enemy? Is it something someone has done or not done towards me that makes me perceive them as my enemy? And... Assuming I do actually have enemies, and without going into details, I do, then what, if anything, have I tried to do about it? 
Can I do anything about it? Can this enemy relationship be changed? Can we stop being enemies at all? As I wrestled with all of this, and as I thought more about what Jesus says, love your enemies, I realized that it isn't about all of that stuff I was going through in my head. Jesus is saying, love your enemies regardless. Just love them. Whether reconciliation can happen doesn't matter. Whether it's your fault, their fault, nobody's fault, love them anyway. Just love them while they are your enemies. In this moment, love them. Because if you wait until all is well, well, that time may never come. Enemies can stay enemies the rest of our lives. So don't wait until some hoped for, imagined future time. Love them now. Pray God's blessings upon them now. Care about what happens to them now. If they hate you, don't hate them back, starting right now. If they speak evil of you, don't speak evil in return, starting right now. Love is hard, folks. You know that? Love is real hard. I mean, it's hard enough to love the people we actually love and who like us. That's hard enough. We all know that, right? But your enemies? That's way beyond what I am usually capable of. Probably way beyond what any of us are really capable of. Because, you know, this call to love your enemies, in all probability, it's a one-way thing. You love them. There's no guarantee of anything in return. But you love them regardless. If you only love your friends and your loved ones, what good is that, Jesus says. Anyone can do that. If you only do good for your friends and loved ones, what good is that? Anybody can do that. Jesus says you do more. You do good for your enemies. If they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. If they're naked, clothe them. Love, as Jesus calls us to love, is real hard. And it's supposed to be. Jesus is not calling us to the lowest common denominator here. Jesus is calling us to something much higher than that. He is calling us to love like, well, he loves. Like God loves. God loves us even when we're enemies. Even when we are sinners turned away from God and turned away from our neighbors. God loves us even at our worst times, in our worst moments when we are behaving at our worst. God doesn't wait for us to be perfect. God doesn't wait for us to be doing everything exactly the way God would have us do it before loving us. God loves us right now as we are, fallen, broken, wounded, angry, scared, anxious, afraid, lost, confused, betrayed, rejected, suffering, grieving, denying, rejecting. Because when we fail to love, God still loves. When we fail to reach out, God still reaches out. When we reject, God embraces. God's love is not about what we do. It is about what God does. And what God does is be merciful. Jesus literally calls us to do that. Be merciful as your Father is merciful. Love your enemies. It is so important that we love our enemies that Jesus actually says it twice in this reading. It's so important, he repeats himself. Love your enemies. Do good. Bless them. Pray for them. It's not about what they've done to us. It's about what we do now 
for them. So, like I said, I wrestled with that this week. And I thought, I actually got to thinking about folks who I perceive as my enemies. Wasn't really a happy time, but there you go. I did it anyway. No, it's not a long list, thank goodness. But there are some folks, church folks, and other folks. I know they don't like me. I know they have spoken ill of me. I know they have done things that hurt me. They did things to hurt me. And I've probably done some things like that in return. I'm not saying I'm innocent in all this. Like I say, it's not a long list, but boy, does that list go back a long way in time. All the way back to college when I got to thinking about it, and that's a while ago. I could name people from most of the churches I've ever worked at as a musician or as a pastor. Now, I don't say too much. It's early days here, so I don't know about y'all yet, but we'll see. I thought about them, and some of them I can tell you their names yet. I could think of them by name. Some I could only remember the act. What happened? Can't really remember their name anymore. Some of them, it's just a vague memory, but, but, but it's still there, you know? It's still hanging around back there. And I got these people in my head, and I got them before me, and what do I do with that? You know, there they are. I've thought about them. Now what? Well, here's what. And it was hard. This thing was really hard for me to do. I prayed for them all. I asked God to be with them. I asked God to bless them. Not much else I can do right now. But giving someone over to God in prayer is a mighty big thing to do. In every situation I could think of, I know that reconciliation will never happen. And forgiveness as a two-way thing won't happen either. I'll tell you what, I haven't forgiven all of them yet. So how can I expect them to forgive me? There you go. I prayed hard for them out of love. Out of weak, feeble, best I can do today, love. That's what I got for you this week, folks. Love. Even for your enemies. Maybe especially for your enemies. So I invite you to take on the challenge and pray for those who you perceive to be your enemies. Ask God to bless them. You forgive them and let the pain and the hurt go as best you can right now. As best you can is the good news. Because we aren't God and God knows that we aren't God but what Jesus calls us to this week, it's a call to try. To do the best we can, knowing what the goal is, and knowing what the standard is, and knowing as well that we will fall short, and God will still love us. Because God's love is truly unconditional for all of us. God's love does not depend on what we do. God's love depends on God, who is merciful, who loves us always and eternally, who cares for us, who forgives us, who welcomes us back, when we wander off, and when we fail to love. The God who will always be there for us, and beside us, and with us. And not only us, but our enemies as well. Amen.
join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike, encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bind us together in one family. Teach us to forgive one another and resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for John and Isabella, Danielle, Gerald and Judy, Garris, Brad and Sharon, Rick, Dorothy, Dee Dee, Shirley, Judy, Lana, Joyce, Diane, Alan, Theo, Joyce, Merle, Awanda, Glendale, and those that we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment now to safely share God's peace with those whom you are worshiping with this morning. You may be seated. At this time, we will invite the ushers to come forward so that we may receive the morning offering.
Please stand. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. Please be seated.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. We give you more thanks and praise for the abundance that has been laid before your altar this morning as gifts of love for our food pantry. We thank you for the open hearts and the generous spirits that have enabled us to share the bounty of creation and our bounty with those who are in need. Bless this food, that it may be a source of blessing to those who receive it. And now send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Our final hymn is God When Human Bonds Are Broken. 